Welcome to today's 5 minute lesson. Today I'm going to be talking more about periodic trends. So I really think that periodic trends are poorly taught a lot of the time because they actually make a lot of sense if you understand core electrons and valence electrons. Uh, the, I like to illustrate the difference uh, very briefly using two atoms which are on the same row of the periodic table. I'm going to take on the one side I'm going to take sodium and on the other hand I'm going to take chlorine. All right, so sodium, we'll worry about that in a second. So sodium's is, uh, atomic number is 11, which means it has 11 protons, which means its nucleus has a plus 11 charge. Now when I start, and now remember it's electron configuration, let's figure out sodium's electron configuration really quick. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, All right? So that means when I put the first 1s electrons on there, now there's two negative charges worth of electrons going around, and so that means that the, uh, the, there's only nine, plus nine protons worth of charges uh, outside, uh, uh, exerting beyond those electrons, because the electrons are what doing what's called a shielding. They're essentially shielding some of that positive charge uh, from reaching outward. So then, if I go to the next level, right, the, the n equals 2 level, that means I'm going to add the 2s2 and the 2p6 electrons on there. Now they've shielded another 8 more positive charge from uh, reaching outside, and so all that's left is another plus 1 charge. So when I put this other electron on, this electron is only being pulled in by plus 1 charge because the other charges are all being shielded by the core electrons. The core electrons do the shielding. So this plus one that's all that's left is what's known as the effective nuclear charge. And that's the only charge that's pulling on that, uh, pulling on that single uh, uh, electron with. Now that's sodium. Let's have a look at chlorine for a second. Chlorine's plus 17 because it has its atomic number 17. 17 protons. And then here's a chlorine's atomic uh, electron configuration, excuse me. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5, which means I'm going to put on the 1s electrons, 1s2 electrons, and now the plus 17 has become a plus 15. I'm going to put the next eight electrons on for the 2s2 and 2p6, and that's going to leave an affected nuclear charge of plus 7. Here's the trick that makes this all work. These valence electrons do not shield each other. That's the most important thing to understand. When I put them on, every single one of them is feeling an effective nuclear charge of plus 7. So they're all being pulled in towards the nucleus a lot by plus 7 instead of sodium's plus 1. So that means that the more valence electrons you have, the further you, the right you go on the periodic table, the stronger the forces are that's pulling these electrons in, which means you have a smaller atomic radius, and it means you have a, a bigger ionization energy because it's more difficult to pull off these electrons. And it's because it's easier to add electrons to it, that means there's a stronger electron affinity as well. So, uh, and for that matter, if you look at chlorine, it has a stronger electronegativity because whenever it enters in a bond with any other atoms, those electrons are being pulled more, and electronegativity is simply the measurement of how strongly the nucleus pulls on any other electrons it's in contact with, like in a bond or something, which I haven't really talked about bonds yet. Well, I'll get there. Electronegativity is going to matter. Uh, last thing I'm going to mention with regard to valent, uh, core electron, valence electrons, and uh, shielding is that... Um, the, there's also the size of the atom also dictates a lot of these periodic trends because remember the nucleus, remember back to when we looked at our stadium and the marble in the middle is the nucleus, that means the electrons are what's creating most of the size of the atom and so basically the stronger you're pulling on electrons the smaller it is, the more layers of electrons you have the bigger the atom is and so that's why you see the smallest atom of all that has electrons really is fluorine because fluorine, if I look at my periodic table real quick, it's got the smallest because it has the most uh, valence electrons and so the, the, the largest effective nuclear charge and it also just has fewer le levels of electrons and so it's just smaller. Fluorine is the king of electronegativity as well. If you look at fluorine's electronegativity, it's way higher than everyone else and then oxygen and chlorine are next and so on and so forth. Um, 
Its electron affinity is very good because it can add an extra electron really easily. Its ionization energy is ridiculous because it's really hard to remove electrons from chlorine. Versus if you look at sodium, sodium's ionization energy is much lower because it's very easy to take an electron away. Right? How difficult is it to take away an electron? It's only being held by a plus one charge and once you remove it, it has a full outer shell. So that's, it's feeling good about that. So uh, that's periodic transit nutshell basically. That's why I think that they often are mistaught because it's very easy to understand if you understand again effective nuclear charge. Gotta get that down. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.